Hello everyone, welcome to Star Trek Online. Now, if you remember from last episode, today I have to pick up a Vulcan ambassador from his home planet and bring him to Pajem. I'm just making my way towards the transporter pad to beam over to my ship. Helm, set a course for Vulcan. Warp 5. Right now we're being contacted by the Ambassador's aide to Perla to inform us on certain arrangements that the Ambassador would like to have while he's traveling. On screen. Greetings. Thank you for agreeing to escort the Ambassador to Pajem. Ambassador Soketh is currently attending a ritual to honor the end of the Call Wreck holiday. He will be done soon, but the Ambassador is hesitant to use transporter technology. His bias against the transporters is not logical, but I have come to accept it. Understood. How should we fetch him, then? I believe that Soketh would be much more comfortable traveling by shuttlecraft. I have received clearance for you to land near the Ambassador's location. I look forward to meeting you in person. As do I. I'll see you on the surface. Starfleet Shuttlecraft, this is Vulcan Orbital Control. You are cleared to land at the requested coordinates. Welcome to Vulcan. Please enjoy your stay. Apparently, the Ambassador and his aide are right up at the top of that hill. Wonderful. So this is Vulcan. Very dry. Ambassador Soketh. Welcome to Vulcan. Thank you. Do you have any questions? Uh, could you tell me a bit about Pajem? Pajem is a small world near Andoria. It is sacred to our people. There have been Vulcans on Pajem for centuries. In 2152, the ancient buildings that housed our monastery were destroyed by the Andorians. The Andorians? But they're also part of the Federation, like yourselves. It was a failing in our logic that led to conflict with the Andorians. We have corrected our error. After the Federation was founded, a group of Andorians, Vulcans, and humans rebuilt the monastery as a symbol of peaceful coexistence and cooperation. Since then, a group of monks has lived there. They study the ideals of Sirach. Fascinating. Do you have any questions? May I ask what you hope to do at Pajem? My business is my own. Sorry. If you must know more, I require a meeting with the abbot. He will not use subspace communications. So if I am to receive his counsel, I need to meet with him directly. Understood. The Ambassador's aide has just informed me that Savin, the leader of the order that maintains the monastery on Pajem, has chosen this moment to illogically refuse to grant the Ambassador permissions to meet with the abbot on Pajem. Apparently, the Ambassador doesn't have time to wait for Savin to change his mind. I guess I may have to try to convince him. I wonder why Savin won't grant the Ambassador permissions. Tapela thinks that the Ambassador has spent too much time off-world. She says she's seen a change in him. Apparently his interactions with other species have grown easier over the years, but with his own people have become more challenging for him to deal with. She's asking that I speak to Savin and try to convince him. Well, I'll give it a shot. High Priest, I presume. Peace and long life. Live long and prosper. Do you seek knowledge of the ancestors? Ambassador Soketh says you won't permit him to visit Pajem. Soketh accuses me of abandoning logic, but he is the one refusing to explain his reasons for wanting to go to Pajem. The planet is sacred. Our ancestors walked those paths. They found understanding and serenity in its quiet. When I am at Pajem, I feel more at peace than any place else in the galaxy. Pajem has been touched by outside influences in the past. The Federation is at war. Now more than any other time, 
We must protect this refuge. I see. Do you seek knowledge of the ancestors? Don't you trust the ambassador? I neither trust him nor distrust the ambassador. I simply do not understand him. He will not reveal his reasons for wishing to speak to the abbot, and has refused a mind meld with me. Normally I could respect his privacy, but other things I have heard trouble me. Indeed. Do you seek knowledge of the ancestors? Tell me about what you've overheard. Sokoth has spent more and more time away from Vulcan in recent years, and seems ill at ease in what was once his home. Tapella admits he has changed in the past few months. He spends hours closeted in his study, and does not share meals with his staff as he used to. Tapella says that the stress of the war with the Klingon Empire is taking its toll. She hopes the peace of Pajim will restore him. Hopefully it will, if you would allow him. Do you seek knowledge of the ancestors? Is there any way I can persuade you to allow Sokoth to visit Pajem? I will permit it if you will pledge to me, on your honor as a Starfleet officer, that you will protect Pajem from harm. Of course. Sokoth says his reasons for wanting to speak to the Abbot are private. I will accept that, but only if you are with him. I know I can trust Starfleet. Please, protect Pajem from any who would violate its sanctity. I will do what I can. It seems I have succeeded in convincing Seven to allow the Ambassador to leave. Ambassador. Do you have any questions? I've spoken to Seven. We can leave for Pajem now. Excellent. Our departure has been delayed long enough by the whims of one man. I am prepared for the journey and can leave immediately. Understood. Right, Ambassador, my shuttle is way at the bottom of this mountain. I'm afraid we'll have to hike down. Starfleet Shuttlecraft, we have logged your flight trajectory, and you are cleared for departure. Live long and prosper. Peace and long life. Apparently, Ambassador Soketh has retired to his quarters. And we are ready to depart the system. Helm, set a course for Pajem. Warp 3. Apparently, we're picking up unusual energy readings in the system. And my first officer recommends that we do some scans before we beam down to the surface. Agreed. Sensors to maximum. Klingons! Shields up, red alert. Let's this close with Captain them. This is Captain to all Klingon vessels! Target their warp drive. There will be no escaping our base this time. It's just three birds of prey. I think we can handle it. Torpedoes, full spread. Talk to the last bird of prey. Fire. We're being hailed by the Klingons on screen. Cease your fire, Captain! Perhaps today is a day for words. My fellow captains were blinded by our vengeance toward the shapeshifter aboard your vessel. What? They have died with honor. But if I am to die this day, then I would prefer to regale the halls of Stovokor with the tale of that foul creature's death. What shapeshifter? Ha! So even the mighty Federation has been fooled by the beast. 
Your guest from Vulcan is not as he or she seems, Captain. They are an Undine. What? They put on a false face and try to control us. But we Klingons know better. We will hunt them down until the last of these honorless dogs die screaming. What, do you have proof? Proof? Pa! Allow me to stick a blade in its belly while I look it in the eye while it dies. That should be proof enough, even for Starfleet. Well, I'll take it into consideration. If you wish the honor of the kill yourself, then it is yours to have. So long as the Undine dies, I will meet my death with eyes wide open and victory in my heart. I await your decision. Close hailing frequencies. All right, then. Apparently, the Klingons ha don't have any propulsion, not even impulse. So whatever I decide, they can't do much about it. The Undine are a species that was first encountered by the crew of the USS Voyager. They catalogued them as species 8472, which is the title the Borg gave them. As the Klingon commander indicated, they are indeed capable of changing shape. Additionally, they possess telepathic abilities that aid them in, inf in infiltrating the cultures of other species. So I suppose Ambassador Soketh could be one. I suppose we could conduct a test to determine whether he is or not. Unfortunately, that would violate his ambassadorial immunity. The Undine are physically superior to humans and consider anyone from our dimension to be an inferior life form. Their vessels are more than a match for the Borg, and they represent a great threat to Starfleet. Where is the ambassador now? He's still in his quarters. Flores recommends we send a security detail to detain him. It's a sound precaution. Do it. The Undine come from a dimension known as fluidic space. They use quantum singularities to move into our universe, and much of their technology is a mystery to Starfleet. But, one thing is for sure, it is not to be underestimated. Why would the Ambassador use a Starfleet vessel to get to Bajem? I suppose they could be aiming to conceal their presence here. What about the Klingons? My chief engineer thinks that what the Klingons are saying could be true. If the Undine are in the Beta Quadrant, it might be just that the Klingons sniffed them out before us. And that in this case, the enemy of my enemy is my friend. But we are at war with the Klingons. Call the ambassador to the bridge and open a channel to the Klingon vessel. Let's settle this. My patience is growing thin, Captain. If you lack the stomach to slay the beast aboard your vessel, then any Klingon here would gladly do it for you. I'd hate for you to stain that pretty Starfleet uniform with Undine blood. As generous as that offer is, it is unnecessary. Then the beast is slain? Not Mac well... Very good! Um, Perhaps you've the heart of a warrior well, after all. Uh, yeah. Let me look upon our enemy, and tonight we will dine together as warriors and drink to the honored dead. Oh, the ambassador's here. I, I present Ambassador Soketh. Captain, I take my meditations very seriously. Why have I been summoned to the bridge? You've been accused. That is your accuser. Alive? You're a fool, Captain! Strike now before it's too late! Not without proof, Captain. You want proof? Then lower your shields and allow me to <laughs> beam over. Where Once war? the Undine's blood coats my blade, you'll see it for what it truly is. A grint hound in Tark's clothing! Ambassador, allow me to explain. There is no need, Captain. The situation is not difficult to unravel. Indeed. My concern lies in the logic of you entertaining this Klingon's meritless claim. Meritless? But if he is right, then it is quite a threat to the Federation. A most illogical conclusion. Allow us to examine the facts, Captain. You have a crippled Klingon vessel. 
whose captain has made unsubstantiated claims that I am an Undine, a species that is known to both the Federation and the Klingon Empire as a considerable threat. Thus, a reasonable consideration. Potentially, but only if a great many other factors were to be true. Is it not much more likely that the Klingons have, in the face of defeat, instead sought to exploit Starfleet's desire for peaceful resolutions to conflict in order to repair their vessel and renew their assault? Indeed. What is the status of the Klingon vessel? Their weapons are inoperable, the warp drive is still offline. Wait. We're detecting an energy surge. They're engaging their cloaking device. Red alert, lock weapons. A true warrior strikes without mercy, Captain. Damn it. I only hope to teach you this lesson personally before the Undine does. We may not be able to best your vessel, but the Klingon knows many roads to victory. The beast may have evaded my vengeance for now, but I can still ruin its plans here at Pajem. Lock weapons and fire. We've lost them on sensors, damn it. Scan the area. Apparently we're detecting energy signatures on the on Pajem's surface. They're in the vicinity of the monastery and they appear to be transporter signals. Life signs indicate that they're Klingons. The ambassador would like to accompany the away team. Absolutely not. Firstly, it's too dangerous and secondly, you might be an undemon. You know? A wise precaution. Though I admit I am eager to see my people safe. I will await word until the monastery is secured. And Captain, let not my journey here be for naught. Away team to transporter room one. Let's secure the area and make our way to the monastery. There are multiple Klingon patrols between us and the main building. I think we should proceed with caution. Stay alert, we need to find the monks. Klingons. Open fire. One down. I don't see any others. Oh, damn, they've killed one of them. Let's continue. Another Klingon. There's the monastery. We're at the top of this hill. More Klingons. Open fire. It's very peaceful. Unfortunately, I can't enjoy the serenity of this place. But I've got Klingons to deal with. up on the hill. We need to find the abbot. We need to make sure he's not harmed. There he is. I think I see him at the top of the steps. Klingons! Protect the abbot. Oh, good lord. That, that one had a bat left. We're receiving a message from Vulcan, from the ambassador's aide. She asks to speak with me immediately. Patch her through to my tricorder. I have terrible news. Vulcan security forces have discovered the body of Ambassador Soke. What? They have determined that he was killed by a phaser blast at short range. His remains were discovered in a stasis chamber, hidden in a cavern beneath the ambassador's residence. Good God. The ambassador on your ship the one that I have been working for is an imposter. So it's true. He's an Undine. You need to be very careful. This imposter was able to fool Sokes' closest associates for months. He is crafty and very patient. Now that he has been discovered, he will be dangerous. Agreed. We need to get back to the ship and detain him.
Such emotion on your face. I see now my deception has been exposed. Pity. Capturing the abbot so we could replace him as well would have been beneficial. But we are strong. We will prevail. You are weak, and the weak shall perish. Oh my good lord. Weapons ready. Engage. Oh, what the hell was that? Some sort of telepathic blast? God, he can take a lot of hits. He's running. He's transported away. Let's return to the Sumatra. Blueberry Ninja to Sumatra. Five to beam up. Energize. There's an Undine ship on an intercept course. Shields up. That must be where the imposter beamed to. We certainly don't have the armaments to deal with them. Starfleet has dispatched reinforcements, but they are still 60 seconds out. We'll have to last that long. Wait. I'm receiving a message through that Tesseract thing that I gave me. It's given us a message to transmit to the Undine. What? Uh, all right. Prepare to engage. Transmit the signal. Let's hope we can survive that long auxiliary part of shield. Keep transmitting the signal. Forty seconds left. We need to keep him from warping out, which means we can't just run. God, we've got phaser burns all over the hull. Auxiliary powder shields. Ten seconds left. I think we're gonna make it. Yes, it's Starfleet! Part of Starboard Bridge, join the fleet. USS Challenger, USS Texas, USS Terrell, USS Kirk, and USS Redoubt. Yes, thank God. But this isn't over yet. We still have to destroy him. God, this ship can take a beating. It's being assaulted by, what, six Starfleet ships? And we're almost doing nothing. Auxiliary part of weapons. Let's finish this. Even with the fleet at our back, the Sumatra is still taking a beating. We just need to keep firing. Where's the USS Kerr? Photon torpedoes, full spread. He's not surrendering. Hey, there's another hundred year old design. A 
Constitution class reefer. You can see the similarities between us. The source of section and the cells. But this is hardly the time to look at other ships and archers being taken apart. We're being hailed. By who? It's not from one of the ships in the fleet. On screen. I don't know if the Undine will listen to your message. You're the one who contacted but maybe me. maybe it will make a difference. The Undine ultimately want to keep fluidic space free from outside influence. When Catherine Janeway first encountered them in the Delta Quadrant, she promised we would stay away. And we held to our end of the bargain until the Undine sent agents to infiltrate our governments. But the Undine only sent those agents because the Iconians fooled them into thinking we were invading fluidic space first. We were both deceived. <sighs> this is a tragic series of misunderstandings that has led to wars and countless deaths. And it's all the Iconians' fault. They used the Undine to destabilize our alliances and set the stage for their invasion. Um... Oh, he, ju he just cut off the channel. I, I don't even get to ask questions. All right, um... Tavral, scan the debris. We're downloading the data now. We're being hailed again. Oh, please tell me it's that agent again. Maybe I can ask him some questions about everything he just dumped on me. Oh, it's from the USS Challenger. Well, on screen. This is Captain LaForge of the USS Challenger. Captain. Glad to see we made it here in time to lend you a hand. Perhaps you'll return the favor someday. LaForge out. Thank you, Captain. We've got some pieces of the Undine's ship on board. We need to get it back to Starfleet. Set a course for Earth's space dock. Maximum warp. And now I have time to think about everything that that temporal agent said. The Ambassador was an Undine? I'm afraid their infiltration of the Federation goes much deeper than we realized. Who knows what kind of havoc they could create? Agreed. Hopefully, Ambassador Soketh was the only one they've replaced, but somehow I doubt it. I've received a report there is a Bolian freighter that is overdue arriving at Earth's space dock. It may need assistance. Well, I guess before we get to Earth, we'll have to see if that Bolian freight is alright. Helm, set a course. But, that's all for this episode. Thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoy this content and you want to see more, feel free to like, subscribe, maybe ring the bell. But I'll see you all in the next episode. Goodbye.